You've been hacked. That would be absolutely awful. It would be the worst thing oh, we could ever think of. That would be just a nightmare, Norm. Could you imagine we're retired, you're retired, yeah. you've saved all this money, and then somebody manages to hack your investment account, your bank account? Just absolutely awful. That would be the worst thing I could imagine. It, it would be, indeed. So what are we doing to prevent ourselves being hacked? Uh, and it, it happens so, so often. We're baby boomers, so we never grew up with technology. Um, we've had to learn it on the fly, haven't we? Yeah, and the crazy thing is, Norm, if you look at our grandchildren and children now, they've all grown up with technology, haven't they? They, they have. So it's second nature to them, isn't it? But with us, we, nope. feel, we feel as though we're always doing catch up with it. So there are people, there's these phishing emails that I'm sure you've heard about where you just get a random email or you'll get a random SMS text to your phone and it'll be somebody trying to tempt you into clicking a link. As soon as you click a link, you get malware downloaded to your phone or your computer and then they can start stealing your identity or stealing your financial. That, that's even worse, isn't it, Norm? It really is. So one thing Norm has, is saying to me is, if you don't recognize the number, do not click on it. No, because basically the banks, mm -hmm. your, your bank is never going to want you to send you an email no. and have you click on it for sensitive information. They just don't do that. No. So it's being aware of what these phishing emails are. So that's one area. The other area that's becoming more and more popular is two-step verification, especially for your bank accounts, investment accounts, where you've got really sensitive information or you've got money. So normally, what do they do, Tim? They get you to um, select questions from a list. Yeah, and I'll be honest with you, I quite like that. You, you can make, make answer their questions or make your own questions and answers up, and then really only you know the answers, and I like that. Unless yeah. somebody gets to know you pretty well, then they might be able to figure out... Um, the main thing is to stop malware from coming onto your computer, especially the ones that you use for online banking, if you're doing that, or your iPads. So one of the smartest moves would be to have some type of software that prevents malware from being put on there. So that's an, another area. What we've done, though, is we've taken it to the second level we decided to do two-step verification with a physical security key. And to show you what that is, this is a two-step verification key. It's uh, on my key ring, so it's with me all the time. And if I am asked to verify my account, because uh, the account will do this from time to time, once a month, once every two months, or if we travel outside of the country, they may well ask for that. So this was a key that we got from uh, Amazon. It's the YubiKey 5 and dead, dead simple to set up. And so we have that for our financial information, um, amongst other things. And we could put a link in the description, Norm, to that so that if anybody else would like to order it, um, they can use that too. What do we see when we're in the airports uh, with people and their cell phones, team? Well, the number one thing is people go to recharge their cell phones. They do. But what a lot of people maybe don't realize is although you think you're charging your cell phone which you are there could be hackers 
who have placed something in the back of where you're charging up, and they can actually be downloading all your information to to them, which it, is really scary. It really is, because we, we never thought about we, this. We, we just blindly... We just found out about put, this, didn't we? Put your iPad we? in, you know, you, Charge you've, been, it up. you've been waiting for your flight for two or three hours, and it's running down. So you you the USB is a two-way street. Yeah. So it's what's called juicing, and these people can be accessing all your uh, information. Yeah. They're just downloading it from it. So one of the solutions is to have something like a power bank with a USB in here. And this can recharge your cell phone nine to ten times. So if you're traveling, you just use the USB, connect it to your cell phone or your iPad, and there's no need to use a public charging station, and you're avoiding one mm -hmm. of those risks of being hijacked. The other thing that we see in airports, and we do it ourselves, is we use the public Wi-Fi. It's free. Hey, we yeah. all like free. Yeah. And you know what? We've done it many times in the past, haven't we, Norm, when we've been traveling? We have. Get into the airport, click on the free Wi-Fi, send all the messages, and good to go. I guess we've just been lucky because we haven't been hacked so far. But that, now we know better. Hey? That's what people yeah. are doing. They, yeah. uh, they, they log on to an unsecured internet. And once again, your, your information is wide open to somebody who is a hacker, if they so wish. Which leads us on. The solution to that is to get a VPN, a virtual private network. And they're so, so cheap. If you buy a two-year plan, you can be paying something between 2 to $5 a month. And that will totally protect you uh, from the public Wi-Fi because all your uh, data is encrypted. That's a pretty reasonable cost, Norm, to stall something that could really be very damaging, couldn't it, if somebody gets all your information? Yeah, it's very, very, it's very much uh, 2 to $5 yeah. a month. It, it's right. peace of mind. The other thing that we don't think about is how about Bluetooth and Wi-Fi? Do you have it switched on on your iPad, on your cell phone, all the time? Because if you do, especially Bluetooth, that can be just like having your front door of your house unlocked and you're just trusting that somebody won't walk in. So if you have your Bluetooth on and you're in a crowded environment, say in a shopping centre or in an airport, where there's crowds, there could be somebody nearby looking for open Bluetooth and they can once again get into your phone because the Bluetooth is there just waiting to be connected to. Same with Wi-Fi. So turn those off when you're not needing them. It's a great idea, isn't it, Norm? It's like locking the front door. So it's so simple, isn't it, that could prevent trouble. It mm -hmm. is. One of the other big things, and this caught out the CEO of Twitter recently, yes. is SIM cards. SIM card hacking. Yes. Who would have thought it? And this is how the hackers can completely take over your identity through SIM cards, hey? It is. So it's all that they need to do is to find out enough about you to be able to call your cell phone provider and masquerade as being you saying that the SIM card is lost or the SIM card is damaged. Mm -hmm. Could you send me another one to this address? And as soon as those people receive that SIM card, they have you locked out of your phone. Not only that, they then have access to all your contacts and yeah. all your email information, everything, don't they? Your finances, like it really I mean, does. When you think about it, Norman, this could be absolutely devastating, couldn't it? It's scary stuff. Oh gosh! <laughs> but we uh, yeah. come from a, a generation of being quite trusting, mm -hmm. taking people on their own merits, and we probably don't realise 
the army of people out there trying to find out data so that they can profit from it. Mm -hmm. Sell your email address and yeah. just on a basic. A lot of things that you really need to be doing, uh, along with the VPNs, turning off your Bluetooth. Um, another very, very important one is a password manager. How many times have you heard somebody, uh, what's your password? <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four? Oh, yeah. You shouldn't use one, two, three, four, or four, three, two, one, should you? Or, or the absolute classic is, what's your password? <laughs> it, oh, it's password. <laughs> I, I know. Who could be so silly as to use that norm? So once <laughs> again, there, there are password managers that are commonly available. There's lots of them. Very small fee. They encrypt your passwords for all sites. And so when you go to a site that needs your password, it's automatically inputted for you in an encrypted form that nobody else can see or access. And it gives you a totally unique password. It's a long encryption, at least 10 digits, so it's very secure. So this was basically maybe a shock tactic. We didn't want to say we were shocked about this, but we just wanted to raise awareness of the fact that here we are, we're in retirement, we have some money for the first time in our lives, and how do we protect it? And it's becoming more and more difficult to do that with iPads, yeah. cell phones, laptops. So we're just trying to make it aware to you so that you could maybe Google and find out different things like, like that. security keys. And if you have a cell phone, this is a security key for a USB A, but it also has near field communication. So all I would have to do is to touch it to the back of my phone and that would verify the website that was asking for a two step verification. So maybe look into some mm -hmm. of these things. We certainly have. We're upping our game, aren't we, team? Well, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're having to learn really quickly on this one, aren't we, Norm? Hey? And I think yeah. if you don't know how to do this or you're a little technology challenged, we would probably say, why don't you ask your grandchildren about it? Yeah, because you know what? They probably know all the answers, don't they? And, and, if, <laughs> and if you don't have anybody that you can ask, maybe contact your cell phone provider and ask them how they can help you, how they can install malware, software, uh, prevention. Um, and there on... are stores too, aren't there, Norm, mm -hmm. that um, they will offer sort of courses or lessons that you can just go and they will teach you a lot about this. Yeah, the Apple yeah. iStore run uh, courses, courses that you can go to yeah. to teach you about this. Also, our local public library. Actually, I was has, just going to mention that. Hey? Yeah. The, a lot of information you can get from there. Hey, So please become more aware yeah. of your cyber security, especially if you're like us and that you have banking online, investments online. They need to be protected in the highest form that you can do. So... That's our tale of woe. Yeah. <laughs> You've been hacked. Oh, well, let's hope. Hopefully hope, you haven't. Yeah, hopefully not. Hopefully nobody does. But you need to be aware of the dangers, don't you? So we hope everybody is staying safe. And keeping well. And until the next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.